This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 347, Marathon Running and Personal Finance, by Jacob Lund Fisker of earlyretirementextreme.com. And I am Dan, the guy who narrates from some of the best blogs out there on personal finance, investing, and more, all in an effort to optimize your financial life. And if you have any topic requests for us, please share them. Or just come on over to oldpodcast.com and uh, let us know what you're thinking. Now, before we hear today's article, big thanks to Health IQ for sponsoring this episode. Health IQ uses science and data to secure special rates on life insurance for health conscious people. You can learn more and get a free quote at healthiq.com slash finance. Again, that's healthiq.com slash finance. Now let's dig into today's post as we optimize your life. Marathon Running and Personal Finance by Jacob Lund Fisker of earlyretirementextreme.com. Recently, Lazy Man over at lazymanandmoney.com illustrated the keys to financial success by comparing it to the Patriots' success on the football field. I don't know much about playing football, but if it's anything like hockey, it's less easy than it looks and requires tremendous skill. Not only do these athletes need to have a high level of fitness and be fairly powerful, strong, they also need athletic skills such as agility and dexterity, as well as technical skills and game awareness. It can take years to acquire sufficient competence to even play the game. Therefore, I personally prefer the marathon analogy. Running a marathon is comparatively simple in that it only requires a high level of fitness, some legwork, and following some simple rules about hydration and nutrition. For those who are already competitively fit, a marathon is not a big deal, and there are certainly more grueling challenges for those who want to test their limits. Ask me sometime. However, for sedentary people, it is a big deal, just like getting out of debt and building up a large stash of money is a big deal. So what does marathon running and personal finance have in common? One, in both cases, it is not the completion of the event that matters. Rather, it's the preparation needed to get to the event. Like a disciplined savings program, preparing for a marathon requires a tremendous amount of self-discipline. Would-be marathoners need to stick to their training plan for several months and learn to deal with sustained discomfort for extended periods of time while building up a sufficient level of cardiovascular fitness. Two, the preparation requires an ongoing effort. Training for a week and a half and then taking a week off and then starting again, or putting the training off, will not obtain the expected results in time for the event. Whether we like it or not, delaying the training or the savings plan does not extend the time until the competition or the day of retirement, and one risks showing up unprepared. Three, sometimes a small effort is not enough. Nobody can complete a marathon by never pushing themselves beyond jogging. At some point, the actual transition to running has to be done. Similarly, saving 5% for retirement is better than nothing, but it's not enough to actually retire in time. The larger the effort, the better the results. Four, it's a primarily mental game. The learning curve of running is relatively shallow, just like saving money does not require any special talents. All it requires is to follow a few simple rules and then go out and do it, daily, week after week. In short, what is needed is legwork to build up the tolerance of the legs and joints to be pounded on for hours at a time despite the mild discomfort. Similarly, financial security is built by going without present comforts and saving money over an extended period of time. There is no fast way to get there. Going too fast risks injury, just like get-rich-quick schemes rarely work and often have high risks of setting progress back by several months. Five, marathon running can change your life. I must say that running half a marathon did not change my life, and I doubt doubling the distance would have made much of a difference. But that was because I did not need to prepare for more than a couple of weeks. However, preparing to a competitive level in club bell sports, which took 18 months, did change me. It made me physically confident in the sense that I am ready to accept any physical challenge that life may throw at me. Similarly, getting in financial shape will thoroughly change a person's self-confidence and attitude towards money. It is perhaps not surprising that personal finance and personal fitness have many things in common and why some personal finance bloggers also have an interest in fitness. Finance and fitness are both about self-discipline, self-control, and hard work. People with those life skills will tend to do well in any endeavor and running a marathon or saving a lot of money can help uncover or build them. You just listened to the post titled Marathon Running and Personal Finance by Jacob Lund Fisker of earlyretirementextreme.com.
And again, a big thank you to Health IQ for sponsoring today's episode. Speaking of marathon running, if you work out or exercise frequently, then you deserve lower rates on life insurance. Seems pretty obvious, but in general, that's not how life insurance companies work. They tend to penalize you for your family history, BMI, and other attributes, yet you don't get rewarded for being active and health conscious. And that is where Health IQ comes in. They are different in that they will reward you with special rates on life insurance. Health IQ uses science and data to secure special rates on life insurance for health conscious people, including cyclists, runners, strength trainers, vegans, and more. You can get more info and a free quote using our link. Check them out at healthiq.com slash finance. That's healthiq.com slash finance. And hopefully today's post got you motivated to not only improve your financial life, but also your health. And tomorrow we'll be hearing from Jay Money, who has some habits of millionaires for us to check out. So I'll see you right back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.